Hey guys, Bubble here bringing you guys a new video and I'm going to show you guys a match I just had on Casual. Of course, you cannot play until February 1st on the actual ranked ladder. So we were just trying to do some casual games to see how it would go. Uh, we matched up against this Calyrex team. So far, I'm undefeated with the team I'm using in Casuals. So we're doing pretty good with it. Uh, I will be using this team tomorrow over on my Twitch. So if you want to come and hang out and uh, watch the team be used and battle against me and stuff like that, uh, the link will be down below. So come and follow and hang out and um, all that good stuff. Uh, I'll have my spreads and everything ready for you guys by then as well. I'm still maybe tweaking a few things and working on some stuff. But uh, let me go over my team real quick. So I have Incineroar, Togekiss, uh, Torkoal, Palkia, Landorus, and Porygon. The Palkia does not have um, Telepathy yet because of the fact that I don't have enough points for Ability Patch quite yet. But when I do, I will be switching it over, and it makes it really good with Landorus because, of course, we can go for those Quakes. We have Choice Scarf on that Landorus, so he does outspeed both Calyrex Shadow and he outspeeds the, um, the Zacian. So, uh, pretty good there. But, uh, yeah, we're going to see the Calyrex team here. We're going to see Calyrex in DD, which is one of the strongest things. If uh, you guys did watch my my run-through of Wolfie's GS Cup, that was my main lead right there, or with Kyogre. Um, so we brought those, uh, he has those, and he also has the Regieleki, Kartana, the Incineroar, and then the Glastier. Uh, Incineroar doesn't do too much to my team, so it's perfectly fine if he brings that. The Glastier is very weak to both Incineroar and Torkoal. Uh, the Kartana, once again, also weak to Incineroar and Torkoal. Uh, so we know those are going to be strong Pokemon against this team, but um, let's actually just get started on the video here. So... Um, the first pick I'm going to make, of course, I'm going to go with the Togekiss, and I'm going to go with the Porygon. Um, he can go with Fake Out with Incineroar, which is pretty bad against us, but that Togekiss allows us to not have to go for the actual um, Follow Me. We can go for Yawn. So we are running Yawn on it, which is really good, especially if they're going to go for a quick Dynamax early on. We can get that Yawn off and... Um, then we can protect Trick Room on the next turn, allowing them to go to sleep without actually having to waste a turn of sleep. Uh, or not protect, follow me, sorry. And then we can set up that Trick Room and um, they use their turn and then they go right to sleep. And then we're going to get an attack off before they even take their first turn of sleep. And then we'll have an advantage going forward. So um, that's kind of the way that um, I kind of designed it to be that sort of way. And before you ask, the reason why we are using Togekiss is because I think Togekiss is actually really good now. The increase in dragon types is uh, going up, obviously. And so to have something like the Togekiss in the team is just going to give us that little bit more reach when we do do the follow me. Um, of course, we do have to be careful for Zacian and Kartanas because Kartana is going to be on the rise as well. But uh, I think we can take that chance and go for it so we are going to have the Torkoal and the Palkia in the back which are going to be our end game Mons uh he does run out of time but his first four is pretty much what I would expect him to go with anyways minus the Incineroar um so he is going to lead the Indeedee plus the Calyrex which is probably his best lead besides going for the Incineroar Calyrex but yeah, I spec'd out this this uh, Porygon 2 to survive both Calyrex and Indeedee going for Expanding Forces. And that's max special attack specs Indeedee and Life Orb Calyrex into the Porygon. So I know we're going to be perfectly well here. And uh, we're not going to be too much of a threat. And we do have that Focus Sash on to the, the um, Togekiss. So I know it's going to survive as well. Um, and I don't know if it's going to be faster than Indeedee because some people run max speed in DD, some people run slow in DD so they can get up their stuff. Um, I had a choice here. I could go with Shadow Ball, but the Indeedee Follow Me, which isn't too likely to happen here, is still an option. So we could have just straight out killed the Calyrex here with a Shadow Ball. We could have protected Shadow Ball. Calyrex over. Um, but that's perfectly fine because we're going to take this. This is a Helping Hands, Helping Hand Calyrex Life Orb. Uh, and we live with 60 HP. I mean, that's fantastic. We're going to get the Yawn off onto the Calyrex, which is going to force a switch, which is what we want as well. So we are going to get the Trick Room up. Like I said, I know he's going to switch. I predict a Follow Me plus a, uh, a switch here, but I'm going to just go for the Air Slash 
onto the Ndidi anyways, just in case it also goes for an Expanding Force this turn. Uh, and I want to go for a Recover. Uh, I'm just hoping I'm slower than the Ndidi, so at least I can do some damage before it does kill the Togekiss. Uh, I'm not really going for the flinches. I am not Serene Grace. I'm actually Super Luck. So um, not that I'm looking to get crits. It's just what I have. Um, I don't really feel like making another one. <laughs> so, uh, But more than likely, I would be running Serene Grace if I was running this team. Um, Full-fledged if, if I was trying to push for um, Master Ball. So he is going to switch up to Calyrex. Uh, he does go into the Regieleki. I kind of predicted that it would be uh, Incineroar. So I'm happy to actually see the Regieleki because I know it can't do too, too much against me. So I'm perfectly fine with this. Uh, we're going to get that recover off. We're going to go back up to very, very healthy. Uh, recover is very, very good. And we're going to get the air slash off. And we're actually going to, unfortunately, <laughs> flinch the Ndidi. We actually wanted it to hit there. So this time, we're just going to go for the safe play. And we're just going to go for the follow me. Uh, we don't want to flinch it again. And um, there's nothing you can do. I'm just looking again. I'm like, yeah, I need to get this Torkoal in as soon as possible. But I'm going to try to break a focus sash on Regieleki. Um, in the likely chance that he goes with the expanding force, um, this will be the best play, but it is likely that he will go follow me as well. But he actually does not go for the follow me. Uh, we are going to get the try attack off and we are going to get a freeze and we do more than half and we didn't even get a special attack boost onto, <laughs> onto him. We got an attack boost onto the Porygon there. So expanding force is going to come out. It is going to knock down the the toe kiss but the regieleki is going to unfree so no harm no foul kind of thing because you always feel bad on those um unless it, it's in a tournament or something then you're like yeah i predicted so yep we're gonna send out the torkoal here but we did waste an extra turn of trick room so we only have two turns of trick room to use this torkoal effectively now um we're gonna get that sun up which is perfect and we're just gonna go for the eruption uh we are charcoal so we don't have to worry about being stuck into it and I am just going to double up into the Ndidi here. Uh, I figured in worst case here, he is going to follow me. So um, Regieleki, or he's going to switch. And his switch would be Incineroar. But uh, because I didn't realize he ran out of time at first, that he doesn't actually have that there. Uh, the Regieleki is going to go down from that, of course. I mean, look how much try attack did. And uh, the Ndidi is going to take a try attack itself. And it's it's almost dead. That indeed he was bulky. I'm thinking it might be a salt vest, just from how little it took from eruption in the sun with charcoal. Um, it just didn't. The calc didn't sit right with me, really. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Um, so yeah. So here we are expecting. Of course, the Calyrex is gonna come back out, but we also see the Cartana, which is not great for him. But once again, we didn't know he ran out of time. Uh, I didn't notice because I was also watching a stream, so I didn't I didn't see it at the time. Um, so Calyrex is going to get off his two abilities again. Doesn't really affect us at all. Um, I'm just checking how many turns of Trick Room just to make sure it was one. I'm just going to go with this, and I'm going to go for the recover. And this is the safe play just in case he does protect the Calyrex, because uh, I'm predicting here the max guard on the Cartana plus a um, a protect from the Calyrex itself. And then our play next turn would be to Heat Wave and to go for the Trick Room, which we probably wouldn't get off because of the Cartana plus the, the Expanding Force. But the thing is, the Expanding Force on the next turn is only going to be single target. So we wouldn't have to worry about it as much, which would uh, which would be a good thing. So that that's kind of what we're working towards. But we need to make the play of the Eruption because this is the last turn. So we have to make the most of the Torkoal turn here. Um, so he does get the max off, and it is actually the Cartana, so I was like, okay, he's going to max guard protect. Fair enough. Makes sense. Uh, it's definitely his best play, and then next turn is definitely max knuckle plus expanding force, which actually, I don't even know if it kills the Porygon, because we're gonna, we'd are gonna we be at full life. But um, yeah, Cartana's dead. Um, Calyrex is almost dead. <laughs> uh, maxing and not going for the protect with a, an eruption in your face, plus your focus sash is not really worth it there. Uh, we do get the recover off, and we are going to go back up to max health, which is, well, yeah, it is max health, which is very nice. Uh, he is going to get the expanding force off, and yeah, by Torque, we'll see you later. <laughs> Porygon actually survives with 92, so you can see the difference in damage that it does using the helping hand and how much it is without the helping hand. 
Um, so, so yeah, we, we live, we live things and he can't really do anything here, uh, because we still have Palkia, which does have assault vest on it. Palkia is so bulky and it does so much damage. Uh, it is a really good Pokemon. Don't sleep on Palkia. My set might be a little weird to everybody, but I'm telling you, this is, the, <laughs> this is the set right here. Uh, and I really like it. I've done a lot of calcs with it just to make sure. Um, of course, we're going to just max just to be safe um, with hydro pump his max geyser is 140 so it's really good and we're gonna go for the safe play and set up the trick room because if we set up the trick room he just loses uh, just in case for some reason he does somehow kill the palkia uh, we will be perfectly okay um, the re <laughs> the good the best thing about the palkia first of all it only has two weaknesses dragon fairy really decent uh, both of those are, well, I guess you can go physical on both of them, but uh, there's only one good physical fairy move, right? And the the best thing about it is that you can switch it into a Kyogre's max max um, water spout, and it does nothing. And when you max him, or not max water spout, but uh, water spout with max HP is more what I meant. So, yeah, that's going to be an Astral Barrage. That did about 105, which is uh, actually really good because that's Life Warped uh, plus one. <laughs> so we take those. Um, but, yeah, we're going to finish it off there with the Max Geyser. But uh, Palkia is really good against Kyogre. Um, it doesn't matter if they get up there, their Airstream or anything like that. They're not going to be doing any damage to you. And you have Max Lightning to hit back for tons and tons of damage um so yeah that's gonna be the game guys uh, i hope you guys did enjoy this like i said we're gonna be using this team tomorrow also on monday at 9 a.m eastern i will be streaming with my wife actually playing vgc she has never played pokemon in her life i don't mean like competitive pokemon she's never played a pokemon game besides pokemon go in her whole entire life so it's going to be her first time venturing into any kind of Pokemon battle ever. And we're going to see how she does in in literal ladder for season for Series 8 on the first day of Series 8. So I uh, can't wait for that. But thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you guys rate, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you guys later.